Inside every Milsim gamer, there are two 30-year-old boomers. One is named Scooter. The other is named Scooter. They are both named Scooter. But this one goes by Skeeter because it would get confusing otherwise. Scooter says, I just want to play Conflict Desert Storm and four-player split-screen on my mod-chipped GameCube, but no one at my vape club wants to go within 500 feet of my home due to my obsession with dry ice bombs. Skeeter says, I just want to buy a 2008 Dodge Charger with a shitty V6 and rev it in my driveway at 8 in the morning on a Saturday. Then, I'm going to leave a comment on a DCS video about why I will never play Arma again because of a PvP balance change from 2015. Which one wins, Dead? Whichever one you give Monster Zero Ultra to, son. Easy Red 2 is what happens if you choose Scooter. It perfectly encapsulates everything that made that era of early tactical shooters so great, while still having a laundry list of modern features. It is an absolute love letter to games like Battlefield 1942, especially with a forgotten Hope mod. And it is criminally underpriced. Honestly, you should just close the video and buy it. If you still aren't convinced, then I guess we can take a look at it in detail. On the surface, Easy Red 2 seems shallow. Graphically, it looks like it's out of another decade, but I think that's a large part of the charm. Graphic settings aren't super configurable, but you can change the color correction mode, which I think is a feature that more any game should have. I find Oshers the most appealing on my monitor, personally. Animations are the weakest part of the visual design, but a big rework is on the way and looks very promising. Textures also have a range of qualities, owing to the game's constant updates. I only mention it because it really shows how far this game has come in terms of quality since the original release. Sound design is generally good. I haven't noticed any overly used stock sound effects, and the mix seems good on my PC. I have had my friends scream out in ear pain from plane crashes though, so take that with a grain of salt. The voice acting has the right amount of ham to match with the rest of the presentation. It is very cool that underrepresented armies like the Italians and Polish are fully voice acted in their own languages. The Anzac voices are... Yeah. The core gameplay seems derivative of a Battlefield clone at first glance, but there are some subtle and not-so-subtle differences that I believe make this title quite unique. First of all, the game is primarily focused around PvE. The bots are quite good overall and really make the battles feel huge. PvP is possible, but there are big budget games for that and I'm not really going to cover it. Missions start by picking a squad to join and then picking a role in the squad. The roles may seem similar to classes and other shooters, but these are specific to not only the mission, but the specific stage of the mission. For example, the mission may start with raiding a beach with flamethrowers, but as the map opens up, the squads may switch to anti-tank roles. If you stay alive, you get to keep your starting kit, which can really change the dynamic of the mission in interesting ways. On some missions, you can spawn in with a tank. After taking the first defensive line and progressing to urban fighting, you might not be able to select a tank anymore. But if you got to keep it... Each stage of the mission can have multiple objectives to take or defend, depending on which faction you chose at the beginning. Attackers have a limited number of respawn tickets to take all the points, and this leads to one of the game's few problems. The AI is meat for the meat grinder, and will rapidly deplete your tickets in some circumstances. On the other hand, if you're defending, it is very easy to set up a position and mow down waves of attackers. I think a lot of the problem is that the AI is much better at taking cover when defending, including garrisoning buildings. The fix is pretty easy. Set the game to a higher difficulty when defending, and a lower difficulty when attacking. It would be nice if the dev added an option for a dynamic difficulty based on whether more players are on one team or another that would just automatically do this. And he just might do this because... This game gets updates all the time. This is something that you'll notice not long after getting the game. The update cycle is insane, and there's only one Italian man doing most, if not all of it. I don't know how he can feed himself at the price he's asking, let alone have the energy to do all of this. In my household, we have a tradition dating back generations, where we put slips of paper with suggestions to Marco and Ravioli and leave them out on the table on April 24th, the night before Italian Liberation Day. The fortune raviolis that are gone by the next morning are said to be the next patch notes. But seriously, if you see this, Marco, I beg you to add the barrel wall check, loading and shooting a howitzer to Monte Casino. I know it would be a monumental amount of work, and the bear actually only moved crates, not loaded the gun, and only like a dozen nerds would get it, but if you just... Story! 
first, the Italians were doing this. Then, they did this. Then, America did this. And now we are stuck with this. The level design in this game is very good, with large believable maps. Each campaign takes place on a single map, with missions utilizing different areas, much like Arma. What I find awesome is how a single mission can have such varied terrain. This is especially true in landing style missions, with boats hitting the beach or gliders landing in fields. This is the best I have ever seen a game pull off amphibious landings. The transports are not player controllable, but instead function on rails. Other games have done this, but often have empty transports or ones that will drop off one or two players at a time. Very underwhelming. Easy Red 2 fixes this with a squad system, so every transport is always full. That leads to scenes like this. That is a mission from the Steam Workshop. The game supports custom maps and missions with the ability for the designer to even design an army down to the individual soldiers' kits, such as how many tuna cans they can carry. This video is sponsored by Healing Tuna, the man's way to recover from a bullet. Never use Soy Boy Ashburn again. Eat the whole can and everything in it. Disclaimer, do not eat cans. This game has an extensive inventory system. Maybe a little too extensive considering that you typically die before you have a chance to reload. But there's an answer to that too. You can just use the quick inventory and pick the most important item based on context, including changing attachments. So why bother to have this one? Well, it allows you to rearm when you've managed to stay alive the whole match somehow. When you're that one Italian rifleman left defending your lone house from a German onslaught and the ammo has run dry, you're bleeding, and a panzer has just redesigned the load-bearing walls. And that is where Easy Red 2 really shines. Those moments aren't something it takes an hour to get to, like an Arma, thanks to how quick it is to get back into the action. Other games that let you get back to the front so quick often fail to have any depth or interesting storytelling devices. Easy Red 2 has a light medical system, and you can revive enemies to capture them as prisoners. So, what gameplay benefit does this have? Uh, you get a tally of how many prisoners your side took at the end of the mission. But the stories that you get from braving the front lines to help an enemy soldier, taking shrapnel from mortar fire, and nearly dying in the process, just to have another player run up and stab him with a bayoneted LMG because Japan, really makes all the small and seemingly pointless systems work together so very well. This game is not an arcade shooter, no matter how much it may look like it. It is also not a true milsim game. It is a semi-casual, military role-playing game, and that's something I didn't know I needed until I gave it a shot. It's a hard idea to sell at first, but I'm glad I took the plunge on it. The too low price had a lot to do with that, and I'm sorry I bought it on sale and not at full price. The dev has a Patreon to help fund more development. His roadmap is ambitious, but certainly not unrealistic based on what he's accomplished so far. I'm linking it in the description. And I hope if you've already owned the game, you consider giving what you think it is worth to you. Thanks for watching.